and welcome. Thanks for joining me today for another Tuesdays with Grace, and we're going to be talking more in depth about ruler work. But first of all, welcome and thank you for joining me. And thank you, Paula. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, let's talk about um, Spring Fling coming up. It's so coming up in a few weeks, and let me go to the website and show you how to register. If you haven't registered, please register. Um, you can. Once you register, you get to, um, the opportunity to win a 16X Elite machine and uh, a Q-Zone hoop frame. That's what it is. And so make sure that you're registered. Block out your times for the little events that you want to go through. Um, there's lots of prizes. You know, every spring fling, fall festival, or even camp that we do, um, we have some amazing prizes, but not only that, we have some amazing workshops and great information about quilting. We have some super ambassadors as well as educators teaching you um, things that they know and understand so that you can learn. And like I said, we always learn from you and you learn from us and that's what makes this home-based community so great and wonderful. Um, make sure you go to the Parade of Quilts and see the categories. Now in the categories, we have several. Um, so if you find the category that fits your needs and what you like to do, please submit it. And um, I think you could submit one quilt per category. Um, and we already have some amazing entries. Uh, look at those beautiful quilts. So, uh, the categories are rooted in tradition. These are traditional quilts and so make sure that you see um, and post and write a little something about the quilt. That's the story that we want to hear and know. All right, and then we have Bloom in the Moment. These are spring-related quilts. So Bloom in the Moment. So if you have a quilt that looks like spring and you've spent some time on and you'd like to enter it, enter that category. And then Flourish for the Future. These are innovative techniques. This is one that I really like and I'm particularly drawn to because I love to see what you guys can do. You are amazing quilters and you can piece like nobody else. And so it's just putting those extra little touches of the quilting on it. So make sure that you enter that category. And then we have In for the Long Haul. These are quilts <laughs> that you didn't expect to take you so long, but man, <laughs> they took a little bit extra time and love and maybe a little bit longer, more of your energy to get them completed. So then we have Little Buds. These are youth quilts. So if you've helped or if you have some amazing upcoming art quilt artists in your kids, please make sure that they submit their ideas and what they've been working on. Oh, God, well, it's amazing, and we want to carry on the tradition, so this is our way of giving back and helping to keep the tradition of quilting alive. And then we have wildflowers, okay? These, this is kind of the miscellaneous category. If you don't have a quilt that fits in any other category, this is your category that you can submit and, and put your amazing quilts in. So... Go and register and make sure that you put your quilts in and have a fun time browsing and make some comments to the quilts and so we can keep this alive and well and get people excited to submit their quilts and the quilts that you're working on. Let's get down to business, okay? I'm really excited about today's because I've been back here working on this all morning so that I could get caught up. Um, I've learned several things and I just wanted to um, talk to you about the things that I'm learning. I learn with every quilt that I make and every quilt that you make if you're not learning and we just go off doing the same thing over and over and over again, you're not exploring. So explore, try something new, add a different technique that you are wanting to learn with everything that you do so that we can grow our horizons and expand our quilting. So let's jump in and let me show you what I have been working on. So I did all my little lines back and forth. So I noticed as I was going on the outer edge that I decided to make it look more uniform and even. Did we turn this one on? Oh, uniform and even. I had to add not only the outer edge, but the inner edge too, to make these triangles look similar. Okay, now 
Don't look too closely because I have some mistakes on there, but I'm willing to show you my mistakes. Okay, sometimes I got a little wobbly and I had to unpick. So I have my unpicker here um, and you know, I like a straight line just like the rest of you. I noticed though that as I was using um, my open toe foot, it works really well for some lines, but for straight lines it's not as good as my ruler foot so notice i've changed it to the ruler foot now i will put this foot back on when i am making my filler designs so i can see where my needle is in relationship to doing my filler design so i'm not going over so this will be really well to see where my needle is so we'll change that in just a minute but for right now the ruler foot is what i'm using and i really liked it with my three by eight ruler notice i have all the markings on it this is what i like about this ruler not only does it has have the raised edge but it also has your eighth and quarter inch markings which will help you become more accurate and it's not so big that you're not going to be able to hold it stable i have put my true big grips on the back of it and with the true grips and the little extended ruler base man we're going to have more stability as we're quilting all right then You'll notice I have these all laid out nice <laughs> and organized, but I have my, my Allen wrenches that I'll use to change the feet and make adjustments. Then I have some other ruler templates. I have this one here. I just wanted to show you, this is a circle template. So if you are intimidated by pebbles, um, this is a circle template or a scallop template that you can go and use. And notice that this little hook down here, if you'll align the lines right along the seam, then as you're going across, it'll make everything nice and even. And then these are the lines that you will be using to offset it. So you'll offset the same way. So you'll put this little line in the center and then you can just, so what I suggest you do, okay, to see how rulers work is to get a piece of paper and try them out on paper. I'm gonna to try to do this so that you can see. I, I don't have a straight line, but I'm just going to use my pencil and I'm just going, can you see what I'm doing? Okay, so I'm gonna start right here because this is the hook where my foot would be sitting. Let me see if I can put it on the paper and show you. So then I would bring it down like this and it hooks. And now I'll bring it up and over and it hooks. And then I'll keep going and have my needle in the down position. With my needle in the down position, then I can reposition it and go all the way across. So if you'll just practice this with a piece of paper, then you can understand. Not only with a piece of paper with your foot, but a piece of paper with your pencil. I would start out with the pencil first and go up and around. Actually, you'd be stopping right here, but I'm just gonna go up and around and show you. Then you're going to hold it right there and reposition, okay? So we're gonna reposition and keep going across. So it's gonna hang up right there. And then I'm just gonna continue going across. Now with the pencil, it's probably not going to be quite as even as with your foot, but this will give you, help you understand the movements that you need to make in relationship to the ruler that you're using. Now, notice that I have these lines right here. I'm gonna match those up and offset them. So I'm gonna offset it right here and go up here, and then we're just gonna move across. So you'd find a seam and then you'll make sure that this line matches up with this that you've already stitched and then it should be nice and even as you're going across. Play with that, it's a lot of fun. All right, and then I had this ruler as well. This is a lot of fun as well um, because you can do these wonky lines and then you can offset them so that they're a little wonky and then going back and forth so they make some really cool lines. You could fill them in with some pebbles, or you could just do some C's like this. Pretty cool, a lot of fun. Okay, so those are ideas, and you could go that direction, or you could go this direction. And then you'll just practice your C's and your curves. And it just gives you some dimension and some different looks 
that are fun to, to explore. But not only that, it's, they're called filler designs. And the filler designs are really designs that you can really um, make, give you that texture and that detail on your quilts. Um, and Kim's asking, do you have a go-to ruler? Yes. This is my go-to ruler. I love this ruler right here because, like I said, it has the little increments. Um, this is really good for straight lines. And all the other lines you could really do free motion without specific rulers. But if you want exact measurements, using a template like this circle template is really nice. Um, and it really will give you that exact piecing without trying to go and find something. So explore templates and explore rulers because you can never have just one. All right, so let me go in and talk about a little bit more about the design on the quilt because I just wanted to cover this really quilt, quick, not really quilt, just really quick. Okay, so I'm calling this right here the Star Trek emblem. You know where they pound on their chest and they're ready to go and they say, beam me up or whatever? That's the Star Trek emblem. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you could do it. You could fill in this area right here with filler design or this area right here and leave this open. Or you could do the opposite. So you could fill this in and leave these two open. Notice what I'm going to do up here. I'm gonna fill this in with pebbles. And then these are all gonna have pebbles, these little triangles. And then over here on the side, I'm going to fill this in with um, what I call some spirals, some closed spirals. So practice, draw your designs on paper, and then try to get an idea of what you want to fill this in with. So to make this design here, it's not hard to do, but you need to have some specific measurements. So what I did for this one, I can get rid of this ruler right here. Um, I measured up from this point right here in an inch, okay? So I put my inch line which is right here on my seam. And then on this seam, pulling, pulling these two together, I would, if I didn't have this seam as my center, I would draw the line so I could make sure that I was centering this and I had a place to stop and then move down to the next point, the other side. So if I didn't have this seam right here, I would actually draw a line so I could make sure that it was centered. All right, so what I'm doing is, notice I'm using two lines here. I'm using this line right here, which is my one inch, but I'm also using this line right here and placing it on the seam. So I have my line going this way, but I also have it lining up with the seam. So I'm gonna line those two up, and then I'm going to mark one inch in. Then I'm going to do that one more time. So I'm gonna use this line here to keep it on the seam, and measure up, so I'm gonna put this line on my little dot I just made and make one more mark. With this, to make this design, you need two points of reference right here in the center. So, I'll show you what I did and then we're gonna mark over here, okay. So, as I'm doing it, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can have your ruler be right here on this point and angled a quarter of an inch. That's why this ruler is really nice. So you can see where the quarter of an inch is. And we wanna make sure that the quarter of an inch right here matches so that when I come down, I'm hitting that point. That's why I like this ruler because I can use these measurements right here to match up to make sure I'm getting right there and that corner, all right? And then, I can angle my ruler right here and put it right here and then I can come up and what I'm going to do is hit just right below that mark. Then if I wanted to hit this mark, what I do is I'd angle it up just a quarter of an inch and I'd eyeball it. So there are a couple different ways that you can use the markings on your quilt. You decide how you wanna use it. But let me just tell you this, once you start doing it one way to get it nice and even all the way across, make sure you're using that same method across your quilt, okay? So let's go over here and do this, this line and let me show you how it's done. 
All right, so I already did my measurements. So I want to make sure that they're nice and straight. So I'm going to align. And notice that it's up just a little bit, but I'm just going to mark right there. And then I'm going to put that line on that one and then mark right here. So I told you I used this line right here, this mark right here to align my ruler on. And then I'm using this down here so that I get my angles just right. So as I pull it up, so I don't have to put my ruler on yet because I already know I'm going to get it positioned just right so I get my point, my needle right down in there. I'm going to pull up my threads. Now, you've noticed I have a lot of stops and starts. There are several way, different ways to hide your threads and get rid of them. On this quilt here, I am not um, leaving long tails and going back later to hide them all. If it was a quilt I was entering into a contest, that would be the way that I would have to hide all my thread tails. Because you don't want to see the stops and starts and you don't want to see all your little cuts and your tie off knots. All right? So look at the videos online and eventually I'm going to get there and I'm going to show you how I do it on the quilts that you want to enter or if you want to hang them on the wall and you don't want anybody to know where your stops and starts are. If you're going to enter a quilt in a contest that's really one thing that they look for. It's not hard to do but it is time consuming. So I don't have a lot of time so on this one I am not using that method but I'm going to get to the point where we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and we're going to show you how to do all these little fine techniques so that you'll become a better quilter and be able to submit your quilts into the International Quilt Festival in Houston and all these other shows and they're going to look at it and think wow where did you learn that technique and you could say oh I learned it with Tuesdays with Grace so anyway and I learned a lot from you guys too but anyway it's a lot of fun so try it and now that I've put my needle in the down position I'm going to hold it down there all right now I'm going to now that I've got my needle in the down position, I have my placement, okay? So I'm going to put my ruler right here on this mark, and I'm going to end up just right below it. That's how I did this other one over here. So now we might want to do a tie-off. Okay, there's my tie-off. Now I'm just going to come up, holding it steady with my hand, and then when I get to that seam, and the needle's right there, I'm gonna stop it so I can reposition my ruler and have your needle so it's down in the down position. And now I'm just going to move down and have it stop right there. Then I'm gonna come back up and finish my design. All right, now I'm going to come back up. I'm just gonna angle my ruler so that my ruler is just right here on this dot. I'm not even going to um, pull my needle up or anything like that. I'm just going to continue on. And now that I've angled it, there we go. And then we're going to stop. I'm going to reposition it. And you'll get better as you go along. See, there we go. A lot of fun. Now, it's a little wider at this end than this end. I'm not going to really worry about it because I'm going to fill it in with some pebbling. Um, and I don't think people will really notice. But as you move along doing this technique over and over, you will get your points exact and even. And you will get better so that by the time you get to the bottom of your quilt, it's going to be the top of your quilt because you're so proud of it. So try it out and see what designs you like and, and try some filler designs. So let's change the foot and try some filler designs. And I'm just gonna cut my threads. And again, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to change your foot. Now I can't change my foot, so maybe I'm not because I don't have my foot height gauge here. All right, so don't do this at home. Use your foot height gauge, <laughs> all right? But I'm going to make a little adjustment um, on my own and show you how I would do it, okay? If I didn't have that foot height gauge, I'm going to use a piece of paper, okay? And I'm going to fold it because I don't have one so that you can see how to do it. And I'm going to fold it four times, okay? One, 
that, okay, let me show you. Because I don't have my foot height gauge, we're improvising, okay? So that's one, two layers, and this is three, four. And that is what I need that acts as the thickness of my foot height gauge. So I'm improvising right here. I'm going to use my little Allen wrench right here. And say maybe you lost your foot height gauge. Now this is a little longer screw than others, so it's going to take me a minute to get it off. But don't be afraid to improvise and do what you can to keep quilting. And I know Brian went to get me one, but I'm going to show you how this works, okay? So where's my open toe foot? And the reason I'm changing to my open toe foot is because then I can see my needle and he went and got me one. <laughs> so we're going to see how it works in relation to the paper. Thanks, Brent. All right, so now I want to put my needle in the down position because I want it to close to the um, hook as possible to set the height of my foot. I'm going to use my paper right here. All right, I'm just going to put it up under right here and then pull it down, okay? And then I'm going to put this on, start screwing it in. And I do more talking than I do concentrating on what I'm doing. So I'm going to put that on. And notice I'm trying to keep hold it so it's nice and straight. All right. And then we're going to bring it back up, okay? All right. So let me make sure that I put the needle back down. And then we're going to slide that. Look. That paper really did the trick. It barely touches, and that's exactly what I wanted. So try that tip. Um, if you don't have the foot height gauge, please keep this around. Oh, here it is. See, now I have two. <laughs> I did have it here, you guys. I just say, oh, that's Carla. Boy, <laughs> we know her. All right. Sorry, you guys. I thought I was really prepared, and I forgot. I told you that I keep all my tools down there. I just got a little freaked out. You guys scare me sometimes. So anyway, <laughs> let's go in and let me show you how to do some pebbling. Uh, practice your pebbling. Practice, 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 and you will become so good. And, and like somebody said, is there ever too much quilting? Well, no, not in my world. I love quilting. So just practice your designs. And for pebbling, we want to think of a figure eight. When you're, when you're drawing your figure eight, we're just going to start right here. So let's, let me show you what we'll do. OK, we'll start right here. And we'll just keep them as uniform as possible and as close together. And maybe you might have to go around a little more to fill them in. But you want as many of the same size, but you might have some inconsistencies. Because remember, we're not computer automated, but it looks pretty good. All right, and that's why we're using the open toe, is so we can see where the needle is, and so we're not going to cross over on our lines. Now, for my little Star Trek emblem, let me show you what I, some ideas to do for it, okay? Well, that's not very even, but that's okay. Let me go up here and cross that. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. You could do a pebble like this to fill it in where you're making some pebbles and you might want to go up one edge and might want to be rounded and fill that in this way. Now, notice I picked up my pencil. That's a no-no to say, Carla, stop talking and concentrate <laughs> all right so you could fill it in that way here's another little thing that you could do that's kind of fun um this is my tiger's eye i like this i like this one this is pretty cool and what you'll do is you'll start out doing c's and you'll do like little claws of the tiger and add those to it and then when you get right up here You'll make a circle, that's the eye, and then you'll start coming back this direction with more claws. 
That's a pretty fun one to do. And it's not hard to do at all. So practice that one. Then here's another one that's fun to practice. And it's just loops. Get a little loopy. Start right here. You could do loops. The thing with loops is you want to make them as consistent as possible so they look uniform. You can get fatter or skinnier. So you want to just make sure you're keeping them as consistent as possible and you get a really cool look to it. Okay, that's another one that you could use. And then one last one that's kind of fun is just the pebbles where you're going from small to large. So you'll just do small here, and then you're going to start progressively getting larger. Now, when you get right here, you want to make it as rounded as possible, and then you're just going to proceed forward. So there are some ideas to practice and do. It's a lot of fun. So practice on paper. All right, notice down here that I have this, so I could do the same thing. I could fill this area in with a nice, filler design and this area as well and then leave this one blank or just the opposite because um, you want this to be um, the focal I'm just going to fill in this little area right here because I felt like the gray would really muddy out the blue so when you're quilting think about the colors and what colors you want to pop because really you can cover it now if I was using a blue that would be okay because it would blend in and it would make highlight this. But because I'm using a gray colored fabric, it can come, come, become a little busy. Um, so just watch it and let's practice our pebbles. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much. Well, I'm gonna try not to talk too much as I'm quilting, but I just wanted to show you how much fun filler designs are. So, and make sure your, your frame is nice and level when you're doing. Okay, now let's talk about stitches per inch, okay, at SPIs. So as I'm quilting my pebbles, I want a more rounded look. So I'm at 12 SPIs. This is a fast machine. That might give me, but I might want to um, raise my SPIs to have more stitches closer together. Um, I'm going to go up to 13, okay? So then I'm just going to keep going. And I'm just going to take my time till I get a little more confident and I understand that I'm talking to you, but just make sure that, just have fun with this. Now, I've turned off the lights on my machine, so I'm having a harder time seeing because the gray matches the background. So get your light bar out. I know, I think they're on sale this month. If you don't have good lighting, come on. Now's the time to invest in some good lighting. And just do your figure eights and keep going, okay? Now, say I got stuck in there, I would just travel along, back along the, my circles. Okay, and then here's one right here. All right, so they're gonna get a little better as I move along, um, but try this pebbling. It's a lot of fun, all right? Um, are any questions out there? Okay, now you can use filler designs with the automation, and what you do, rather than free motion quilting, okay, um, you will um, pick your filler designs and fill in that area, and there's some beautiful ones. Now, Dawn is asking a great question. If you have the automation, you have to contend with the belts, okay? Not fun when you're trying to do tiny, dense little stitches and make them look really, really good, all right? So, a couple of things. You will have to release the top belt. I have a really good guide on how to do that. So Don, if you will email Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com, I would love to send you how to release the belts and make it so you don't have to take them all the way off, okay? And then you can continue doing what you want to do. Now, it's not going to take them all the way out, so you can reconnect them just really quick. It'll take probably two minutes. 
minutes, okay, to do this. Not any longer than that, and you'll be able to have the mobility that you need to move along your quilt, making those dense little pretty designs. All right, any other questions that you think? What kind of batting do you use? Okay, this one is a 60 weight um, bamboo batting. I really like it. It's a new one that I started using. Um, I got it with Windline, um, and it was really nice. However, um, because it's kind of not as tightly woven, it, it kind of has some, if you're taking it on and off, it will kind of stretch. So you have to be really careful with that, but I really like it. It's very soft. It would be one that I would really put in a baby quilt to make it nice and soft and cuddly. And it moves a little bit better than the regular bamboo. So I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I really do. It makes it really nice and a little loftier than others. And so as I'm quilting, um, <clears throat> It will make it, these, my pebbles pop and my other designs pop. So that's what I wanted. And also, when you're thinking about using the ruler work, you could use different colors of threads to make certain areas pop. So watch out what you're doing and kind of explore. It, if you're going to do this quilt, and I really encourage you to do it, make it and start using the rulers on it so that you can explore your techniques and how you want to use it and what you want to do with ruler work. Okay, Donna asks, um, what machine are you quilting with? I am quilting with the 21X Elite machine. It's a faster machine. It's 2,600 stitches. Um, and that's why I didn't turn the SPIs all the way up to 16 because it would be going so fast. Um, yes, I have a ruler table on um, underneath. Let me show you what it looks like. I don't mind showing you. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to stop right here. Let me cut my threads. And let me show you. I'm going to come over here so Brian can so you can kind of see. Notice, okay, this ruler base is one of our newer ones. It has a little bit extra towards this end than most other, I would say any other ruler base out there in the world of ruler work. And we decided that you just needed more stability as you were moving along. So this ruler base is really a nice one. If you have the older style, you have a great ruler base. You don't need to upgrade. But if you're really going to get into this, you might want to think about upgrading to the newer style. Okay, someone's asking how to find the magnifying glass on the site. I am not sure, so let's go to our accessories <laughs> and let's see if we can find it together. So we are on the website right now. We are going to machines. Let's go into machines. Can we just put in the search? Oh, yes, put it in the search. Bryant's going to put magnifying glass in the search and we're going to find it. There you go. So go to the search bar up at top, put the magnifying, magnifique, and then you'll be able to find it. And it really is a wonderful thing to have. Notice I have it right here. And if I had a hard time, because my eyes are so not good, <laughs> hard time seeing, um, I would use this definitely to, you could probably quilt with it. Uh, I think it's sometimes a little hard because my eyes aren't there yet, but that's where you can find it. Um, your needle magnifier is the Magnifique, is what it's called. Um, okay, Kathy's asking a great question. When changing the foot, does it matter if the, yes, it does. It really does matter if the needle is up or down. It needs to be in the down position closest to the hook. To, to, to set the foot height correctly, you need to have it in the down position. Just think of it, okay? If I set the foot up and I had it in the up position, um, this would bang down on top of my needle plate and you'd hear it thud, 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 thud. And if you hear that, then you know that it's banging and it could break and it's pushing the shaft up in there. So make sure you put it in a down position. Slide, just, just like this, slide your Gauge, I put them down here, <laughs> underneath, and then you correctly set the height of the foot, okay? And then tighten it up. And then you're ready to go. That's all there is to it, okay? Any other questions? Okay, 
Next week, we're going to have our question and answer. I have a, a, a video to show you of a fabulous quilter who designed a design to quilt with in our automation and a couple other things. I had one that sent me a really good question about some settings. So if you have some questions that you want help with, please email me because um, this is the time that we really want to answer and help you. And with those questions, you also help so many others, okay? So email Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, -A, graceframe.com and I know Madison's over there mouthing the words as well so anyway she said <laughs> that she could stand in place of me <laughs> because I say this so often but let me see what you're doing see what you're working on make sure you um, hashtag TW Tuesday TW Tuesday okay TWGQA for their questions and then um, on Facebook or Instagram, and then show your progress with T-W-G-M-A-R. That's March. So we want to see what you're doing. We want to see what you're working on. And even if you're not using a ruler or showing this ruler work, please send us what you're working on. Um, and stay tuned and keep in touch. Make sure you're becoming a home-based quilter on Facebook and joining that group fabulous quilters, so many techniques, so many interesting, interesting stories out there of how you've um, gotten into quilting and how you're just moving on in your progression into quilting and what you're working on. So let us know. Please take care. I will see you next week with all the great questions that you're going to have and we get to answer them. I'm looking forward to that and please take care and make sure you're registered for our spring fling coming up soon. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.